Good afternoon, everyone. Zombies, we see them in Hollywood, especially for the last five years, but we also see them in the 1300s, 1700s, 1600s. Lithographs showing. Is Hollywood pre programming your mind to get ready to see all of these people that are emaciated because food production is going to decline globally? South Africa going offline in the West, still cool there. North America, these three areas, especially Alberta, cold returning to the U.S. and Canada next week. Northern Central China going offline. Australian production starting to go offline for wheat due to jet streams shifting. And this video is made possible by Hemp Lucid. If you haven't been paying attention, there has been a plethora of zombie movies in, say, the last five years. Television programs just inundating us with zombie after zombie after zombie movie program series, etc. But when we look back in history, this is a potato famine in Ireland. Sort of something similar. And then we go further back in the 1600s. Looking rather, I don't know. Let's take a look again. These are the zombie hordes that you would see. Emaciated individuals without the proper amount of nutrition in their bodies. That's exactly what happened here. We're just looking at lithographs through history. This is family friendly. Jumping down to South Africa, I'm calling it right here. Everywhere there's a red circle on these next five maps I'm showing you, these areas are going offline due to the grand solar minimum repeating. Here's my forecast for 2018. Western South Africa. Gargantuan declines and with the political situation, confiscation of farmlands, Everything could possibly go to zero. It's a wild card there. But when we look at temperatures, you can see those same areas are cooler by at least five degrees Celsius. Now remember, Celsius and Fahrenheit temperatures are quite different. So you're gonna have to do the conversion yourself. So think about 10 degrees Celsius would be 50 degrees Fahrenheit. But when we start looking at these temperatures on how much cooler it is, you know, being 50 degrees Fahrenheit compared to being 40 degrees Fahrenheit or something along this line is what you're looking at here in the charts. Let's go a little bit further up. This is really interesting. Botswana, and we get up into the Kalahari Desert there. But these whole areas are becoming moister and cooler as well. Let's continue over to the East Coast. This is just above South Africa going into Mozambique and also Madagascar to the east there. I wanted you to stay back on the mainland though to show you it's still in that same cooling. It seems the whole entire part of Southern Africa is becoming moister and cooler except for right at that area where they're growing the grains in eastern South Africa. Still dry as a bone there, drought. Let's jump up to northern Africa, Morocco. Again, they're below normal temperatures in these same areas that are matching up with the modern minimum temperature reconstruction. All-time record snowfall this year in those same mountain areas. But then we look and we get this strange temperature inversion. We're getting these strange lines across the planet where there's extreme below normal temperatures and then you get these extreme above normal temperatures. I'm going to point a couple more of these out to you here. Australian wheat growing regions. These two areas that have circled in red have been experiencing year upon year losses already. The area bordering in South Australia and New South Wales already declines this year. They're already losing production left, right and center down there. Still waiting for the tallies to come in, but they have significant losses over last year. Let's put it that way. And the jet streams seem to be shifting down there as well. New Zealand being battered by out-of-season storm after out-of-season storm. And there's been snows in summer in a Tasmania. Strangeness going on. This is all has to do with the jet stream shifting due to the weakening magnetosphere. That's my forecast. Those two areas specifically offline in Australia. Wheat. A day and a half ago. And I even used Climate Reanalyzer. The warmest climate data set on the web. If you want to prove that it's hot on the planet, use this data set here. I use theirs and look how cold it is still up in the North Pole. But the news will be all about that little scorpion tail that goes up into the North Pole. Watch it, follow it, track it. That's what they're going to focus on. I found this incredible chart here, Environment Canada, showing the snow depth departure from normal. Now what interested me right away was the areas in Tibet where the Chinese are now starting to have cannons full of silver iodide or some type of hydrochloric gas, whatever it is, to create more cloud cover and the Tarim Basin to refill. 
The next point of interest was below Greenland. You can see in the Maritimes in Newfoundland there in Canada. If they still have this much snow cover, eastern Canadian crops are going to have a difficult time getting in the ground as well as what's happening out west in Alberta. Speaking of China, let's jump over to Heilongjiang. That is the north part up there near North Korea. Now I'm going to do a full series on North Korea. The whole reason that Trump is now talking with the Rocket Man. Now I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but something unusual happened in North Korea this year. A, they're having a drought, but the army was lack of food. So they went in and they rounded up all the farmers to go help them look for more food. So the amount of planting that's going to be done right now is nil, zilch. And they're really worried about these 20 million starving people pouring over the borders into South Korea and up into China. And then suddenly we have this new round of talks starting, nuclear programs abandoned. That's not related at all, is it, to the grand solar minimum? Let's go down into central China, massive flooding, different types of wheat, especially corn being grown down there. But these two areas specifically in the red, and that does include North Korea, declines for sure. Anything at 45 north is going absolute to zero over the next few years. Let's jump over to North America here. I'm talking about Canada and the U.S., Mexico baking hot. These are May 2nd temperatures. I want you to see the below freezing temperatures that are coming back to Canada and parts of the U.S. And what do you see that I showed you in North Africa? That unusual line of extreme cold on one side and extreme heat on the other. We're starting to see it globally now. Nothing is normal anymore with our weather patterns. This is not CO2. It is the effect of our sun on a weakening magnetosphere and our jet streams going out of flow on a multi-century or multi-millennial cycle. Let's take a look at these areas that are going to have reduced yields this year. And from this point forward, it's game on. All these areas are going to continue to decline and decline, and there'll be larger circumferences of this added in as we move forward into 2019 and 20. And those lithographs I showed you of the zombie hordes is 2020 or 2021 maximum. Now, why would I take the audacity to show Alberta way up there? Well, the area over at the right in Ontario has already been showing year upon year losses. This is Environment Canada showing the corn charts, and everything is just declining over there anyway. We've seen the wipeout of Nebraska and Kansas wheat this year with the blizzards, and then we have all these freezing storms and all these things that have just been adding up to record cold and record snows in so many areas where we grow crops. The, the amount of reports coming across the ag web, newswires, it is a travesty of trying to get crops in the ground right now. So let's jump up to Alberta. I want to thank Environment Canada for providing these charts as well. I linked everything in the description box below along with Hemp Lucid making this video production possible. Do a little research on CBD oil. See how it can benefit your mind, your body, and your spirit. Now what's interesting about this chart here is the water equivalent in the snow. Now we can see wherever we get this pink is well above normal. Anywhere in the blue is above normal as well. So we can map out where the water concentrations are, basically meaning flooding. And then what you can do in the next set of charts is you can overlay it with the snow is. So when you start to see where the snow is overlaid with the over the wet, you get a real good gauge where some of these areas are not going to be planted on time. And they're going to go well past May 15th to get things in the ground, for sure. Joe Bastardi, as always, putting out great information. What do you see again? This same line of hot and cold on the side. This is becoming our new weather pattern. This extremophile flip is what kills crops. This is what destroys crops that are in the fields in mid-grow. And this is what causes non-harvestability coming in because of early season winter storms. Now, I also want you to feel like a plant in the ground at the moment. You're soggy, you're wet, you're cold. If you're in the ground at all, you'd be a lucky plant this year. The 29th of April, we see that line again. Heat up in the areas. Canada prairies, fine. But then the temperature drops on May 2nd into below freezing again. Now you can imagine the weather fronts that are going to accompany this. It's going to be blistering winds, snow again, ice, zero visibility, blizzard conditions, and then it flips again back to the warm on the 9th of May. So you got to realize this temperature inversion is going to happen twice in just a two-week period. That's why I'm making the predictions of where the crops are going to go offline. 
I encourage you to jump over to Ice Age Farmer, Christian Westbrook's crop loss map on the Ice Age Wiki. He's keeping an update of what's going on globally. I'm going to be adding some in there as well, but this is my forecast so far for where you can expect crops to go offline and guaranteed price increases. Look at what's happening across the commodities market at the moment. Things are up 16, 18, 21% on the things we eat this week. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. The zombie hordes return. And it's not because of some mysterious disease that rips through the world. It's because of food shortages. Hollywood's preparing you for what's coming from the Grand Solar Minimum.